previously on the PBR. We've got it going on in hot Atlanta. Chris Shivers announced earlier today that this is his last year. He's retiring. It's kind of a relief that I'm done after this year, so. Chris <laughs> Shivers is in control of the law on Frontier Watch Fugitive. Man. Stormy Wing took Asteroid D. 6.11 seconds. Chris Shivers searching for his 93rd, 90 plus point ride. Go back up and hold on tight. He's got it. His 93rd of his career. And that's going to be good enough to move him to the lead. JB, 90 or better, he wins. And it's not going to be enough. This is bull ride. Chris Shivers is your champ. This is the PBR. The Built for Tough series has landed in Space City this week, so we expect high-flying and out-of-this-world action once again. The NFL's Texans had the crowds cheering in Reliance Stadium all season long. Now it's time to cheer for the Cowboys and Bulls. For the first time ever, the PBR is part of Rodeo Houston. First held back in 1932, this time of year, everybody is a cowboy. Guess what? Asteroids back, looking to build up momentum before his showdown with Bushwhacker next week in Dallas. J.B. Mooney is here too, and why wouldn't he be? The world number one has his own momentum to continue as he looks to win his first ever world championship. But Valderon de Oliveira wants that coveted gold buckle as well, and he feels 2012 is finally the year he puts it all together. And Douglas Duncan grew up 30 minutes south of downtown Houston. Ever since he was a little kid, he's dreamed of riding in front of these fans. We welcome you to stop number two of our stadium tour and inside the cavernous Reliant Stadium. The crowd still filling in and we are on the dirt today. So we're gonna welcome you to the PBR's Built for Tough Field Box. Alongside PBR legend and two-time world champion Justin McBride, I'm Craig Hummer. And Mac, this may be a first for the Built Ford Tough Series to be part of Rodeo Houston. But as you know, some of the PBR's best over the years, Houston holds special meaning. Yeah, it does. You know, a lot of the guys that, that built and made the PBR what it is today have competed in Houston before in the rodeo. And 40 years ago, Jerome Robinson won the short round at Houston Rodeo. So a lot of history. He might not be happy that you just dated him like that, but congratulations, of course, to a guy who makes the PBR tick. Let's talk about our men at the top. Last week, before our show, J.W. Hart and I talked about how it was a two-man race between J.B. Mooney and Valderon de Oliveira. But after the show, Ryan Dirtyder had done his best to insert himself into the equation. Yeah, I think he's definitely in the mix right now, Craig. This is a guy whose confidence is through the roof right now. You know, over the last few seasons, I thought Ryan Dirtyder was a guy that rode really well and exciting into his hand he had a little trouble away from his hand mm -hmm. he has turned that around this year keeps his head down his back straight and does all of his bending at his hips and I think that's what's been the major turnaround for him here we see him in Oklahoma City championship round against two sexy away from his hand look at this guy he breaks at the hips every time crawling out over the front end and he keeps his head down the whole time in Atlanta championship round same exact thing, bull away from his hand, never making too big a move, staying right where he needs to be and doing things picture perfect. And I think that's what's put him in the mix for this world title race and going to keep him there. He hopes to be the talked about topic weeks from now. A guy who's just hoping for a little home cooking to turn his season around is Douglas Duncan, who's standing by with Leah Garcia. Craig, not only that, but Douglas is joined by his dad, Mike, and we're standing here behind the shoes right now. Before we get to the bull riding, you grew up so close to here. What's it mean to be competing in this arena? I just remember sneaking behind the shoots in the Astrodome and looking up, and one day I'm going to be here and uh, worked real hard to get here and just glad that all my friends and family can come watch me and support me because they don't get a chance to that often. Indeed, we are at the Reliance Center, so, it's just, so that we're not over at the other arena, but it's still big and still powerful. You talk, Mike, about what you're impressed with. What do you always tell Douglas to focus on before he rides? Well, I don't tell him much because he rode bulls way better than me. And uh, it's hard to tell somebody with, that's, uh, that's done the, what he's done and accomplished what he's accomplished. And uh, we're just proud of him because he's a fine young man. And um, I know it's very special for him to be here. It was very special uh, when he won Houston. And... Uh, 
I, I know the fans, I appreciate all the fans coming here and they they Douglas is their hometown favorite. Beautifully said. Like that a lot. Before we get started with the bull riding, let's check in with the dirt. Shorty Gorham, what do you got for us? Well, Leah, I'm not sure I quite heard you there, but uh, hey, I heard you say earlier that this arena was big and powerful, and that it is. This, this thing is huge. It's the biggest arena we've been in yet. Uh, you're going to see some different formations out of us. Uh, we're all honored to be here. We all grew up actually watching this rodeo on TV. Uh, some of us actually came here with our parents and watched it. This is actually where I met my wife for our first date. Uh, we didn't go to the rodeo for a date, but yes, I did take her on one right after that. But uh, we're excited. Big arena, good bulls. Let's get down to it and start with bucking bulls. Shorty, I hope it wasn't Dutch treat. You paid for everything, right? No, no, I made her pay. I, I think that's why she didn't come with me here this weekend, Craig. She was afraid I'd make her pay again. All right, well, we'll get that full story perhaps at a later time. We start section one with our 2008 PBR world champion, Galerme Marchi, number eight in the world at the moment, Mac. He is matched up against Boyd and Floyd's top proctor. Yeah, really good matchup here. galerme has been a little bit hit and miss so far this season. There's been times where I think, oh man, this guy is back and, you know, he's going to compete for that second world title. And then you've seen have off days, so hopefully he can get it all going back his way again right here on this one. And to your point, last year he had seven events where he was a zero, the big O. He's already got two of those this year. It's something to look forward and to look at as we move forward. And it's going to be another weekend like that, the official buck off time. 3.98 for Marchi, and even though it looked as though those weren't hugely powerful moves from Proctor, more than enough timing to get Marchi off. Yeah, it's a, it gets him off, and you know, this is something that when we did see Glaremy win his world title, these kind of things didn't happen to him. If a bull did get him in bad position, he moved back over the front end and got out of trouble. Today wasn't able to do that. He just kind of hangs in the spot where he's in trouble at, and the bull gets him on the ground. For the second week in a row, if the men ride, they will advance to the Built for Tough championship round. Last week, we had 18 guys, and what a championship round, as you know, Mac, it became with so many of those rides being excellent the second time around. And it seems common sense, but we'll remind you, the combined score is how we determine our champion. Yeah, and everybody that, that makes a ride in the long round is going to get a chance at that championship round, and I love that format. You stay on, you move on. Sean Willingham against Studley. I had a chance to speak with him in the locker room earlier, and I, I put it quite bluntly. Are you going to get it done today? He said, I'm going to try. He goes, I'm looking pretty fit. I'm just not riding well, and that's his 10th straight buck off. Yeah, and Sean is having so much trouble right now. You know, we had been seeing him in the last few weeks getting rocked to the outside. Last weekend in Atlanta, bull one one jump and maybe a half of another one he is the outside and off this weekend now he's fighting it so bad he's clear down on the inside of the spin so he's really battling it right now not a good thing when you have to not only battle the bulls but battle your own brain Willingham's going to try to sort things out before iron cowboy next week in arlington texas so now it's time for the 2009 pbr world champ cody lostro to go up against wild cherry he told me earlier that he knew this bull had been out a few times on some other tours. He'd only been out once in Oklahoma City. Poured McCoy on his back, and the bull won that matchup. We'll see how this one goes. That was a lost opportunity for Cody Lostro, Mac. It looked as though after a couple hops, Wild Cherry finally settled into a very good right-handed spin but Lostro does the reach over. Yeah, and man, he started him so good, Craig, as we'll watch it back here. Gets around the corner really, he's in perfect position right here. Doing really good, bull kind of doesn't kick very hard one round in the spin there, drops Cody down on the inside of it. He has to come across with his free arm to try and stay out of the well. Inside Reliance Stadium, so far it's the Bulls that are having their way early on in round number one. Lostro just scratches his head and wonders, well, maybe I'll figure that out by next week. Meanwhile, it's Bonner Bolton's turn. He's only been to two events 
on the Built for Tough series in his career. He's looking, hoping the third time is the charm. Let's check in with Leah. Craig, and in those two events, he said that what he learned was that there's a lot of good bull power here, and that he knows now what he needs to step it up. And I said, how different is the bull power? He said, you know, it's not one individual bull, but collectively they're more consistent, and that's what's powerful. And he said that caliber is impressive, but more impressive are the riders. He said that he gets very motivated by being on tour with all these great cowboy athletes. Shorty, and if you're going to get up, get matched up against a bull that's got some power, but also gives you a chance for a score, play harder is a good, good dance partner. He is, Craig, and the reason is this bull, he'll go out there and be either way. But when he, when he's around there, he just kind of blowing in there. He kicks hard, but he blows in there, gives you time to get readjusted. But uh, after the ride, watch this bull. He's, he's real difficult for us to work uh, because the bull has a lot of feeling, and this bull, unlike other bulls, when a rider comes off, he knows exactly where they came off, and he'll swoop back really fast, tries to get his head on him before we can get our hands on his head, and it makes it really difficult. We're going to have to get on top of our game, Craig. Leah had a chance at the top of the show to speak with Douglas Duncan and his father, Mike. Well, Douglas and Bonner Bolton, childhood friends, first event that Bolton had ever been to was Portland, and I remember Keith Ryan Cartwright and I, Max, spoke with Bonner and Douglas when we he talked about him said this guy is going to be around for a long time he's as good as I was or can be yeah and Bonner's a guy I've seen ride in some turn pro division events and he really can ride but going back to what Leah was speaking of about just getting used to this caliber of bull each and every weekend uh, it, it really is a maturation process for a lot of young guys perhaps one of the reasons why Ryan Dirty Eater has finally come into his own when he gets to see him later. Perfect example of what Shorty had talked about. All right, brother. Once Bonner Bolton was on the ground, Frank Newsom put himself in harm's way and took a shot. Shorty, we're watching the ride right now, but talk us through what it was like for you afterwards. Well, uh, as you saw, that bully knew right where he came off. He did kind of come off in a bad spot, but uh, Frank did a heck of a job of getting in there. Getting his hands on that bull's head, but when he did, it lifted Frank up a little bit, got his feet off the ground. When he hit, he was on his heel. Bull had his way with it. No one needs to be reminded that Frank Newsom is as tough as they come. Bonner Bolton hits the dirt. Frank Newsom takes the shot for him. Meanwhile, another one of the six Texas Cowboys we'll see today is coming up. Harv Stewart from Stephenville gets a chance to go for his seventh ride of the season. NBC Sports Network's coverage of the PBR Bill Ford Tough Series is brought to you by Five Hour Energy, the no wait, no hassle way to a great morning. By Cooper Tires, the official tire of the PBR. And by Lucas Oil, the world's leader of high performance and problem solving lubricants.
So far, the Cowboys have been skunked, but through seven events, J.B. Mooney, who finished second last week in Atlanta, still in the world at number one spot. And what a Hollywood script ending it was last weekend in Atlanta for Chris Shivers. Yeah, Chris Shivers making his farewell tour out of this year and gets him an event win. You see that we are on stop number two of our fourth stadium tour, or out of four stadium tours, but most importantly, Robson Palermo, it looks, will be back next week at Iron Cowboy. Leah has more. He sent a video to Keith Ryan Cartwright showing that he was already riding bulls in uh, Brazil. I talked to Dr. Tanny Freeman. He has not yet checked in with Dr. Freeman, but he is expected to come back next week, and he's starting a cascade of other riders who may be back shortly, too. Shane Proctor is uh, due to be back in Detroit. Skeeter Kingsolver looking to come back for Glendale. And McKinnon Wimberley, who's been out since January of 2011, had that traumatic head injury, is looking to come back and ride bulls pretty soon, too. He's been going to some open bull ridings and has even won a few, but he says he wants to wait and come back to this tour when he can actually win. And he's craving to get on Asteroid. Well, Stormy Wing almost took Asteroid yard last week in Atlanta, 6.11 seconds. Mark Stewart, you used the term inconsistent to describe Marchi, our first rider, right. seemed to be set for hard. Yeah. Stewart down at 3.46, and you knew where I was going with that, Mac. Here's a guy that's finished sixth at two separate events this season, but his next closest result, 28th. Yeah, and we've, we've seen him make some really big rides. Bulls like this, we've seen him get by. You know, and, and when Harv keeps moving, keeps going to the front end, he can ride these ranked bulls, you know, but when he clamps down, Harv's a guy that tries extremely hard every time, but when he just clamps down and sets there, he cannot get by him. There are still no qualified rides here in Houston. A tad surprising, but Cody Lambert, the PBR's director of livestock, figured we would not see as many rides as we did last week. Spoke with Aaron Roy earlier this evening. He told me that knee, he's waiting to get a doctor's appointment to then get an opinion on whether surgery will be needed. He simply told me, if I don't show up one weekend, it's because of my knee. <laughs> you know, and that's a tough deal. We're this early in the season and already talking about these injuries. He did such a good job to stay centered for about five and a half seconds, Mac, but then, as you well know, a, millise a millimeter out of position cost him those milliseconds at the end. Yeah, and he was trying this entire time to stay out of the inside of the spin here. See, he's in pretty good shape right here, but now he starts getting dropped in. He's a little bit loosened up, doesn't want to touch, doesn't want to touch, finally goes all the way to the outside and comes up short of the eight. About half a second too soon for Aaron Roy. You can get all of the latest PBR news, pictures, and features from behind the scenes on Facebook and Twitter. Make sure you follow Team PBR for exclusive access. And you can also tweet any of us on the broadcast team by using our Twitter handles that you'll see throughout the telecast. But don't miss our special YouTube broadcast at youtube.com slash PBR now throughout the 2012 season. Justin Kuhn, who had quite a weekend in Atlanta, fifth place overall, but more importantly, I think, Mac, the first 90-plus point ride of his career. Yeah, that, that had to be a great feeling for him, you know, and, and he made a great ride, and that just shows what this guy is capable of, Craig. On a weekend when Chris Shivers extended his overall record, his 93rd 90-plus point ride, that's an incredible perspective, isn't it, for Kuhn to get his first? Yeah, he gets his first, and, you know, all the rest of the guys in the locker room got to be looking at that stack on 93 90-point <laughs> rides, man. That's just ridiculous. Well, it's a stat that is absolutely impressive, but I would have to think, to your point in the locker room, they better not be concentrating on that. They better be thinking about eight seconds at a time. It's a little overwhelming, but Kuhn's 90-plus score came on T-Rex in the championship round last week. I didn't get none anyway. Sorry. And Justin Kuhn, a little bit more preparation than perhaps he would like. Shorty, what are you seeing in the shoot down there? Well, Craig, uh, just see Justin getting ready. To be honest with you, you kind of caught me off guard there. Uh, but no, this, this is a good little bull. And, and Justin's a guy, he's, he's coming along. Uh, I think he's going to be a force to reckon with. This is a guy that doesn't like to call fish. That's what it takes.
Justin Kuhn, our first ride here in Houston, and it was a very good one. Compliments of Blonde Bomber. I'll tell you what, that 90-point ride from last week might be rubbing off on him. I think he liked that feeling a whole lot because he just made a really good ride right here. Bull into his hand the whole time, and this bull is bucking. You can see he's coming up in the front end, drifting in the spin, following it up with big time kick the whole way. Never out of position one time. Great job. Let's talk about the word Shorty used, confidence. We often use that word to describe a lot of riders. Mac, Ryan Dirtier, we've talked about. These guys all seem to walk a little taller. They seem to have that spring in their step after a good weekend, and Kuhn backing it up. Yeah, and I think that's in any sport, Craig. Confidence is such a huge factor in it. And, and when a guy's got his mojo working for him, man, he's not thinking about any of the little things that go wrong. He just moves past him and, and uh, keeps right on going. You can see it's definitely working for Justin Kuhn. Kuhn first on the board, but it could be the rest of the field looking up at him by the end of this round. Chase Outlaw gets his chance against hard times. This bull from Curry Creek has been ridden three out of four times on his Built for Tough series career. So Chase Outlaw hopes the odds stay in his favor. Yeah, that's a, that's a stat you love to see, you know, that they've been getting by a bull. the first few Cowboys hey. felt like dominoes. Now we have back-to-back -back rides. Justin Kuhn on the board, and now Chase Outlaw. Yeah, and Chase, Chase is a guy, Craig, that you can tell he knows what he's doing. It, it's not by accident that he's here. This young guy, I mean, he does a lot of things right in the course of a ride. He's just got to be able to settle down every weekend when he gets here and let his ride and do the talking for him because he knows what he's doing. That's his second qualified ride in the big leagues, and he's with Leah. Chase, what do you think's been the secret to trying to get your groove here? I just relax and have fun. The first couple of events, had some butterflies, but they're gone now. It's a good time to have them be away. The butterflies have flown the coop for Outlaw. Meanwhile, Justin Kuhn is gonna stay right where he is. He's our bad boy mower's lead dog. Two scores on the board, working our way towards the championship round. Still to come, Ryan Dirt Eater. Keep that one on your DVR. The Cherokee kid is ready to sling another arrow. Ryan Dirt Eater seems like he's on a roll. They're on their feet. When the PBR continues on NBC Sports Network. Confidence in bull riding, it's every bit of it. You gotta come to these, uh, these bull ridings with uh, sky high confidence, you know? You gotta work at it during the week, be determined, you know, and uh, dedicate yourself to this sport. You gotta come at these bull rides knowing that you're gonna ride whatever you draw, whatever you get on. You gotta stick it on, you gotta come 100%, feeling great, mental and physical. That's your Cooper Tires athlete profile. Ryan Dirtyder will start off section two. And I go back to a quote he gave me last year, which plays into what we just saw, Mac, which he said, you gotta ride every day, not every weekend. And you have to think about it every day, not every weekend. And clearly, that's one of the things that's working for him right now. Yeah, he's definitely a very dedicated young man to this sport right now. He wants to be a world champion, and he knows what he's gotta do to make that happen. Seven top tens all of last season. He already has four in the first seven events this year. <laughs> Toy Soldier was a handful. Even though that bull has been ridden over 50% of the time and matches up more favorably with left-handed riders, Mac, he took Dirt Eater to task. Yeah, he did, away from his hand. And, you know, I, I was just bragging on him about how well he's been riding away from his hand. And he started out really good, but then you've seen his free arm come way back. And uh, those, are, those are the little mistakes that he can't make away from his hand and get by with them like he can when bulls go into your hand. We always talk about the injury history that Dirt Eater has had at only the young age of 22. As you see him hobbling around, we'll get you an update on his condition as soon as we can. But the bottom line for Dirt Eater, 
There will be no score here in Houston, and he'll try to regroup before Iron Cowboy 3 next week. This is Jordan Hupp aboard Loose Cannon, one of Mesa Pate's bucking bulls. Hupp at the moment, 16th in the world. <laughs> Mesa Pate doing something right with Loose Cannon. The direction change enough to get off Jordan. Yeah, and the direction thing's exactly what it was, Craig. Bull had a little bit of kind of some weird timing, but into his hand the whole time. And, and Jordan's a guy that rides pretty raised up. He's pretty tall and, and, and rides that way. This bull here feels him riding him that way. He says, nope, I'm going to change it up. Jordan has to be able to get down, stay up over the front end to make that change. Hup already a winner in Portland this Caesar season, excuse me, but after a top 10 performance in Atlanta, he will now be a spectator in Reliant Stadium. Love you, Felicia. Nice, nice. Matt Bohan getting a chance for the third time this year on the Built Ford Tough Series, originally from Cole Camp, Missouri, now making his home in Stephenville, Texas. He's gone through those hip injuries, hip surgeries, Mac, over the past couple seasons. Finally, he feels he's on the men. He's not 100% healthy. The pain's still there, he said, but at least the strength to balance himself and to lock down is there. Yeah, this is a guy that we've seen the last couple of years have a, a really hard time with injuries and uh, still trying to come back from them. Get over there. No chance, bucked off at 2.78, and you can see Jesse Byrne getting a little bit of an extra workout. Yeah, brother. Frank Newsom, Shorty Gorham, they're all doing their field sprints. Usually that's reserved for the men running for a touchdown in here, but here they're running for their lives. Yeah, man, I, I tell you what, they just ate that bull up. I hope we get to see it again. But going back to Matt here, you know, he says the pain's there, but the strength's back. And, Man, I don't know if it is 100% back, because you see both feet, boom, come right back up on top of the bull's back. And, uh, you know, that's something that we used to not be accustomed to seeing with Matt Bohan. He was a guy that got good holds with his feet, and uh, you didn't see bulls get him behind him very often. But look at these bullfighters come in here, Craig. I mean, Jesse Byrne, Frank Shorty, the guys, they ate that one up, man. Another great example of what great athletes all bullfighters are. Matt Bohan walks off dejected, but plenty more rides to come from Houston. Still, only two men on the board, led by Coon. Still to come, defending champion Silvano Alves takes the stage. This ain't the guy you want on your back. <laughs> he threw a lot at Silvano Alves, but as we've seen, it takes more than just wiggling and twisting. When the PBR continues on NBC Sports Network. Every sport has a, you know, it has great athletes in it. To be at the top of any sport, you have to be a great athlete. Number one, you look at those bulls, and number two, that there's guys with actually enough guts to get on top of those bulls. I think that, uh, you know, that's the intriguing thing for me is the fact that the guts that it takes to get on those bulls, and again, there's no way I would ever get on top of that bull. Just one week until the big bull draft in Cowboy Stadium, and PBR fans, you still have a chance to be a part of it. Sporting greats Reggie Jackson, Wayne Gretzky, and you just heard John Elway have also signed on. You can join the competition and buy a share of your very own bucking bull. Go to BackseatBuckers.com to learn more. And one of your best friends of your life, Ross Coleman, is part of that as well, Mac. Yes, sir. Ross man's in there helping them out, getting uh, getting all the guys involved. And uh, I know he's been working really hard and, and doing a great job helping this thing come together. Our bad boy mower's lead dog, Justin Kuhn. What a two-week back-to-back time this has been for Kuhn after finishing in the top ten in Atlanta. Getting his first 90-point ride. He now sits atop the standings here in Houston. Well, our defending PBR world champ, Silvano Alves, has not had the start to the season that he would hope. But he's not worried at the moment. Let's check in with Leah. He started, Craig, at the beginning of the season, number one in the power ranking. And yet he's number 18th today. Out of seven events, he's ridden 13 of 19 bulls. And his riding percentage is third highest, but he has yet to win a round. So Silvano is just clicking away, getting rides but he's not getting those big point rides. And he's a man, and I, I, I've talked to him, and he won't really admit it, but deep down inside, he wants to win a round on this PBR report. 
Lufkin. He's on Geronimo, one of Luf Lufkin Ranch and Rodeo's bulls. It was great to visit with Chuck Griffith earlier. He gave us a list of stats on his bulls. Mac, that's always appreciated. For defending PBR world champ Silvano Alves, riding a bull like that has to be like just standing on an escalator. Yeah. No problem at all. <laughs> yeah. Falling off a log. Hey, the bull hangs his horn right out of the chute and turns himself into Silvano's hand. And that was a really bad luck for the bull because he's going to have no chance <laughs> when that happens. And you see it right there, hangs it, rides him all the way down the gate with it. Uh, That's like a free hall pass. Yeah, for Silvano it is, man. And, and then, of course, he's just like he has been all season and last season for that matter. Pretty much ever since we've seen him come on tour, the guy's pretty dang flawless throughout the course of a ride. Let's send it down to Leah once again. Silvano, how important is it for you to get a big score in this format on your first bull? I have Tab here, by the way. Que importância tem ganhar muitos pontos neste formato no primeiro touro? Sim, é muito importante por causa que é um boi só. Você tem que fazer de tudo para parar, para entrar no shot go e fazer bom apresentamento porque é um evento só, um dia só é um big event. It's extremely important because there's, you only get one bull and then to get into the short round, it's only one day. You gotta you you gotta ride the first bull to make anything happen in the event today. And we saw that from him today, guys. And that was Tab Barker with Leah, our Portuguese translator. We haven't talked a lot about this format, Mac, but being third in the standings actually is a blessing for Silvano. The first two bulls, the guys that make it to the championship round are going to be paired automatically with certain bulls. The first two, as the, for the best scores, are perfect poison and asteroid. You don't want those two spots. Yeah, well, you know, some guys do, most guys don't. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, but and it don't get a whole lot easier after that. Rock and roll is the next bull in there, so I mean they're going to stay really tough. But just getting the score is so important in giving yourself a chance because you don't know how many bulls that they're going to be able to ride out of that championship round. So as long as you give yourself a chance, is a good thing. Two great corrections for Lindemar Lino. It only his second ever Built for Tough Series event, but he finally pays the price over the edge. Another good bull from Lufkin Ranch and Rodeo finally gets the job done. Yeah, over there. He's been a good bull for a long time. Really likes to move when he's in a spin, really drifts is what we call it. And you can see it, it's wanting to work him to the inside of that spin the whole time. He's doing a good job swinging his outside leg at him, trying to stay out of there. Finally, though, he gets work clear down on the inside and has to touch. Lino still looking for his first qualified ride of his PBR career. It will not come here in Houston, Texas, perhaps down the road in Arlington next week. Time now for Elton C. Day on Black Widow. This one from Lufkin Ranch and Rodeo. At the 2011 PBR Finals, this bull bucked off Austin Meyer and had a whopping bull score. Yeah, 46 point bull score for him there. I mean, that's. You start getting that high, you're, you're up there with the likes of Bushwhacker, Asteroid, you know, you're, you're talking about bull of the year type of contender there when, when you get those kind of markings. This bull five years old and Chuck Griffith telling us he feels he's only getting better with age. That doesn't bode well for CD. CD, the 2010 Brazilian national champion. Well, if you want to see bull power, all you're going to have to do is rewind and watch that a couple times over. Black Widow absolutely sinks its teeth into Elton CD. Yeah, wicked right here. Big jump left, back to the right. I mean, he's already got him loosened up and reared back. You can see his right arm was completely straight there. And when a bull brings you there, ouch. I mean, that's a, that's a shot right there. CD doesn't look the worst for wear after taking that wallop from the horn of Black Widow. Continuing to be our black bad boy mower lead dog, Justin Kuhn, 88 point total, well ahead of the two men chasing him. Still to come, JB Mooney. Unbelievable.
unpredictable, just continued to spin faster and faster. J.B. Mooney, however, had an answer for everything. J.B. Mooney has increased his lead over Valderrama. When the PBR continues on NBC Sports Network. You know, this year, uh, at a start anyways, it's different than it was last year as far as the top 10 standings. Last year, it was the top, just pretty much straight up Brazilians, uh, with me being in there as the only American. Uh, this year, it's mixed with Americans and Brazilians. You know, the Brazilians are tough, and uh, they're hungry for it, and we just got to ride our bulls and do our job and uh, ride the best of our abilities day in and day out. The Brazilians are going to keep trying, win and win, but it's going to be hard. They'll be right so good. It's been an interesting season so far. The top 10 equally divided between the U.S. and Brazil. There are the standings at the moment. Yeah, and definitely, you know, the two dominant countries uh, in the sport of bull riding are, are at the top right now. But as you can see, there's a lot of mutual respect mm -hmm. that, that goes between the two countries and, and the riders. So uh, it's going to be a fun season. Justin Kuhn leads the charge. Chase Outlaw at the moment, second best score. He would face Asteroid in the Built Ford Tough Championship round. J.B. Mooney, a win in Baltimore earlier this season. Last week, second in Atlanta. In fact, the top three events have all been top three performances for Mooney. He's ridden nine out of his last 10, and that is one of the clear reasons why he's our world number one. Yeah, and he's having a huge year so far. And you know, the key for JB is just to be able to keep it going, obviously. You know, that's what that's what he is looking for, consistency, and not have it like he has in years past. It. You know, this is a guy that's also, before I get too far ahead of myself, deals with injuries on a daily basis. You know, he's a tough guy that only you don't hear a lot about. Him. From about five to seven seconds. Early burn settled down a little bit, but J.B. Mooney never showed anything other than total control. Yeah, that was it. You know, the bull started out really fast and then uh, slowed down and just got really nice after that. But to no fault of J.B.'s, I mean, he's in perfect control when the bull's going fast and after he slows it down. So that's exactly what he's got to keep doing, too, though. You know, when he can make rides like that on a consistent basis, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough for anybody to, to take the world number one away from him. He's now 10 of his last 11, and his 85 and three-quarter point total means, means he moves into the asteroid position. He is second overall, and if he stays there, what a matchup that would be. Stormy Wing took asteroid to six-plus seconds last week. J.B. Mooney could have his chance by the end of today. While JB gets attended to by Dr. Tandy Freeman's medical staff, we move on to Ryan McConnell, who is searching for some consistency himself. Hasn't ridden a bull the past few weekends after going two for two in Baltimore. He gets his chance here against Rocky Smooth. You know, and that's that's so uh, unlikely, Craig, for him to just have these string of buck offs going because because Ryan is a guy that technically can ride really really well and uh, you know I think he's a guy that's that's battled his head so far from a mental standpoint uh, this season you know he's, he's not a guy that's had to deal with these string of buck offs before and, and he's just trying to figure it out and, and get back to rolling. Shorty to the point that Mac just made in terms of McConnell struggling with his head. I was surprised to see after last weekend that that was the fourth weekend out of these seven events he hasn't had a qualified ride. Yeah, you know, and it's just the mind games. That's all it is. This guy still has the ability. Anybody that's competing here in this arena, Craig, has the ability to ride these bulls. And this guy is no doubt one of those guys. It's just a simple mind game. He's got to get things turned around. I don't know what it is. You know, everybody does things a little bit different in terms of, of turning your, your, your mental game around. He needs to figure something out that's going to do it. Get to doing it on a regular basis. Get things turned around. Once he gets turned around, I think we're going to see him excel. Mac, you'll be the first Stay person. Down. Right. Stay down. Stay down. He's way out there. You all right? Unfortunately, McConnell staying on the ground and this is never a good sign but a look at how quickly Rocky Smooth dispatched him. Yeah, you know when a guy is struggling like Ryan has been, oh man, just seem laying really hard right there. These bulls don't make that any easier for you to try and get back. Oh.
Dr. Tandy Freeman and his staff out immediately. And a great job by Shorty Gorham out there, sort of being the field sergeant, telling everybody to make sure to get the bull away because he felt Ryan McConnell was injured. And Thankfully, Ryan able to get up and walk out under his own volition, but I started to say, it's good. number one, it's good to see him walk out under his own accord, but in terms of his ride, Mac, I started to say, I'm no bull rider, but it doesn't take a genius to point out the fact that almost immediately he looked off to the left. Yeah, his head was, you know, he had his head picked up right away out of the box there, and, uh, you know, and that's just part of those head games that he's struggling with right now is his focus is off when it comes to bull riding. We'll get you an update on Ryan McConnell as soon as we can. Meanwhile, Leah standing by with our world number one, J.B. Mooney. There are a lot of rides yet to go, but J.B. at the moment is sitting second. And we were joking just a second ago. I said, what score were you in? I said, what if you were second? He goes, I would like that. Asteroid, seriously, you're craving to get on him? Yeah, you know, I got on him another week, and he didn't go left. He went straight, and then he went right. And, uh, I need a little payback on him. Time will tell. JB right now sitting in second. Bucking machine from DH Cattle Company living up to his name, LJ Jenkins, tossed into the air without much effort. Yeah, and this is a bull that LJ has seen a lot and uh, I'm really surprised by the outcome here. <laughs> I figured LJ would really handle this one. But this is a bull that keeps getting better every time that I've been able to see him too, Craig. This bull used to be pretty flat and fast. Now he's really kicking more and he's still got the speed. For the second week in a row, LJ Jenkins goes 0 for 1 and will not make the Built for a Tough Championship round. Time to look at the pairing of Jory Marcus and Black Attack. Another bull from DNH Cattle Company. Marcus, the number eight power ranking at the moment. That stat is derived between how well you're riding as well as how well you ride the tougher bulls. Jory Marcus, third best this season in Sacramento. He's going to be our fifth qualified ride. How about a little something for the effort? Marcus taking everything that bull could throw at him. Yeah, Craig, you cannot. I mean, there is no substitute for good old-fashioned effort, and he just put out a million percent. Right here, bull starts into his hand. He's walking down to the inside of the spin. Not only does he change it up and go the other way, which should have got him on the ground, he gets out of there, keeps just digging and scratching and clawing, giving it everything <laughs> that he can to stay on this bull. And that goes a long ways. At the end of the day, it gets him a score. I like to call him Mr. Five Hour Energy. Jory Marcus never slows down, and he's with Leah. How's the experience riding in this big arena? I love it. It's awesome. The fans, I mean, the people, it's huge. I, can, I just can't wait to get on my next one. He was just screaming, I love the PBR. Two-time PBR world champ Chris Shivers may have announced his retirement last week, but he showed he's not going to go quietly off into the sunset. Can his fans dare to dream he'll win back to back? Houston is about to get the Shivers experience. Chris Shivers announced earlier today that this is his last year. He's retiring. It's kind of a relief, you know. I've uh, I've been fussing and fighting with it for, for, for some time now, and, and I'm done after this year, so. Chris <laughs> Shivers is in control of the law on Frontier Watch Fugitive. Chris. Chris Shivers definitely on the PBR's all-time A team, searching for his 93rd 90-plus point ride. He's got it, his 93rd yeah. of his career. And that's going to be good enough to move him to the lead. JB, 90 or better, he wins, and it's not going to be enough. Chris Shivers is your champ. And he walks away today with a win. Is it still as sweet as it used to be? I think so. Whoever wins as sweet as it used to be. It's always great to win these events. You know, these are the toughest events in the world. They bring the absolute best bulls. These are the very best bull ridings that the world has to offer. Five qualified rides here in Houston, the first time ever. The PBR has been a part of Rodeo Houston. What a great month it is gonna be here in Texas. Starting next week, we will be in Arlington 
for the Iron Cowboy three. Chris Shivers next up in the shoots, trying to go back-to-back -back wins for the first time in longer than I can remember. Before he goes, let's check in with Leah again. Chris is used to a winning streak in 1998. He won the event here in Houston. I asked him, who was he competing against way back then? He said, well, Ty Murray, Tuff Hedeman, Jim Sharp, they were all here. And I said, and did they already know your talents back then? And he was way too shy to admit. But they knew who Chris was. Chris knew who they were. And they were all on par with each other's talent. Chris has proven himself to be one of the greats of the sport. And it is a pleasure to have him. And he's looking right now to finish this season strong and to go out on top. And to put that even into more perspective, Mac, when you came along, Chris Shivers was already in the locker room, and he was a guy you looked up to. Yeah, definitely. He was he was the hottest young thing that bull riding had ever seen and had already been making big rides for a couple of years. And, uh, you know, it's just it's really impressive for me to see, Craig, that this is a guy that says he's done this year and he's still able to not only chalk up 90 point rides, but event wins. Ponce de Leon's got nothing on Shivers. He has found the fountain of youth. After winning last week in Atlanta, he scores here. Yeah, he's fired up about it too, Craig. <laughs> I'm so glad he announced that this is going to be his last year so people can tune in to watch this guy. Uh, you know, this is what he's been doing for so long. And this bull gets stronger as the ride goes on. You can see Chris having to work a little bit harder, uh, but at the end of the day, no problem for him. Chris Shivers has opened up the floodgates. It was an emotional win last week, an intense celebration after this ride, and he's with Leah. Chris, when the guys on the back of the shoots are yelling all day, does it feel like that on the back of a bull? You know, I think so. These, I don't want to say these younger guys, but you know, they're they're full of excitement, you know, and their their adrenaline's pumping, and, and I just have to feed off of that, you know. They're they're really excited, and they're making really good bull rides, and. It's fun to watch. Way to show him up tonight. He's got that twinkle in his eye, doesn't it? And then just a little smile on his face. Fun to watch his right. Shivers has been that throughout his career. It's time for Agushi's turn. Marco goes up against Fire Freak. We've only seen this bull once on the Built for Tough series where he took care of Bonner Bolton in Portland. Yeah, and it's great bull here, gonna be a really good matchup. This guy's had an impressive season to start off with so far, with a new win in Sacramento, finishing third in Atlanta. Three 90-point rides already. It's a way to start off your season. We saw him in only two events in 2011, but this year here he has found his footing. Number five in the world, third best power ranking last week was his third top five of the season. He's wired, so we get a chance to listen into his preparation. Looks as though it's somewhat of a silent one this week in the shoots, but everybody's different. Take the slide, Agushi. Take the slide. Okay, now. Only 22 years of age. Badge up! Badge up! Badge up! I get it! scared! Badge up! My friend! My friend! Marco did a great job of just clamping down. It's that bulldog or pit bull complex I was using to describe Cord McCoy for a few weeks, Mac, where he just, once he settled and locked his hips into the spin, he just didn't move. Well, in, in his upper body, didn't he? he kept it to the front end, but with his lower body, with his legs, he didn't clamp down. You can see he keeps letting loose the whole time there, Craig, because this bull is wanting to the outside so bad the entire ride, but he keeps letting loose with his legs and keeping himself centered. A tail of two separate halves of his body keeps him in contention. We saw no re-ride flag, so it looks as though it will be a low score, but it will be a score. The seventh score so far of this long round, only 79 and three-quarters points, but we've heard a number of the Cowboys say it already, Mac. Any score is a good score. Yeah, a lot of them are just wanting to get back for that second shot, get on one of the ranked bulls and uh, give themselves a chance, because like we've talked before, you don't know how many of these bulls are gonna ride when it gets into the championship round. Cody Nance won the first event of this year in New York City, Madison Square Garden. Last weekend, he was bucked off of Deja Blue Emu. Here he goes up against the bull. He knows Shepherd Hill's sod buster. 
In Oklahoma City this year, this bull took care of him in about five seconds. Officially, it's going to say 7.68, but even you sort of ducked your, <laughs> ducked your yeah, head I'm in gonna, your hands, Mac. You got scared that something might have happened there. I'm going to have to watch the replay to actually see what happened because I didn't, I just put my head down. He was in a bad, bad situation right there. Starts a pretty good ride. The bull moves forward, back into his hand, gets him rocked to the outside. Now he's trying to grit it out and get himself a score and really puts himself in harm's way right here. Touches the ground at 7-8. That was after Nance had challenged the score. And take another look at how close this sport is defined by. Just misses him twice. Grazes him a little bit, but as you well know, Matt could have been much worse. Once again, Dr. Tandy Freeman's staff busy after a rider hits the dirt. Now we check in with 2004 PBR World Champ Mike Lee, the first man to ever win the world title event in Las Vegas, as well as the world championship. Eight career wins for Mike Lee, a guy that sort of tends to sneak up on you, I think, Mac, in the standings. It looks as though he's not having a, a great season, but then all of a sudden you check the stats and you think, oh my gosh, you know, here's a guy that's already had three top tens. Yeah, and I think a, a lot of that is because, Craig, you know, he may not be winning events or post to 90 point rides, but he doesn't have a lot of those Ofer weekends in him either. He always is getting rides. Caddy Shack able to shift him off the right-hand side ever so slowly, but at 6.8 seconds, it comes to an end. Mike actually missed last week in Atlanta because of a knee injury, so it's good to see him in the lineup here, but he won't get anything for the effort. Yeah, good to, good to see him back, but man, I sure thought this one, as soon as this bull turned back, I thought, oh, this is over. Mike's got him knocked out, but you can see him get his hips shifted completely to the outside, and he tries a few big Hail, Hail Mary moves, but it's too late. A, a decent bull score for Caddyshack, what you would expect in a long round. Caddyshack from DNH Cattle Company. Mike Lee gets to look at the standings up on the big board like the rest of us. Justin Kuhn, one of the early rides, still sitting on top. But look who would face Asteroid if we had our championship round at the moment. It would be none other than two-time PBR world champ Chris Shivers, something he would love to add to his resume. Still to come, Valderon de Oliveira. Bucky may have the power, but Valderon brings some extra volts. The bigger they are, the stronger they are. That doesn't matter to Valderon. When the PBR continues on NBC Sports Network. NBC Sports Network's coverage of the PBR Bill Ford Tough Series is brought to you by Super 8. We make it easy, you make it fun. Super 8, destination super. And by Golden Corral, help yourself to happiness. They call it Space City, Houston, home to the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, also known as the energy capital of the world. And our top two men in the standings feeling pretty energetic at the moment, as well as the seven different men, Mac, who have been able to convert and win an event this season. And if you go by the flags, it's alternated America, Brazil throughout the start of the year. Does that mean we're looking at a Brazilian winning this weekend? <laughs> it looks like the statistics are saying <laughs> that, but there's a few guys in there from the old good old USA that got something to say about it yet. We're still searching for our first two-time winner this year. Perhaps it will be Valderon. He's about to ride before he goes. Here's Leah. Valderon finished second in the world standings last year in 2011. He's looking to move that up one position. So I asked him what he's been doing in order to improve. And he said the one thing he does is he researches the bull by talking to the stock contractors. After he's done talking to them, he figures out what he's been doing. So for example, right now as he's sitting there, is his rope too loose? Is it too tight? And then his goal is to ride true. What did you see happen in that ride where it went wrong for Valderon? 
the bull was able to get, and this <laughs> this doesn't happen very often, but he was able to get Valderon's upper body a little bit back. And, and Valderon's a guy who's so strong and he's able to keep his riding arm back or bent all the time. But when a bull gets you lean back and straightens, straightens out your riding arm, I don't care how big and strong you are, you're not gonna be able to get by him. That bull from Wolf Creek Cattle Company seldom ridden, seldom faced the likes of Valderon, but in this one versus the bull, Valderon comes up empty-handed. Now the world number two and number three riders are not in the Built For Tough championship round. At the moment, a chance for J.B. Mooney to convert and pad his lead in the world standings. Stormy Wing, last week, we have to show you again, in the Built For Tough championship round, he went up against Asteroid, and he was close. Yeah, he started out great right here. You can see Asteroid's trying to bring him the whole time. Finally, he gets him leaned back, you know, and if Stormy, if Stormy would have quit fighting him and stayed breaking over at the hips like he was the first two jumps, I think we'd have seen him ride Asteroid. <laughs> you and I got a chance to ask him as he walked by earlier today, did you watch the ride? Have you thought about it last week? He goes, yeah, I saw it twice. It just pissed me off. Yeah, he's still <laughs> upset about it. Still upset about it, you know, and, and hopefully he can turn some of that fire and aggression into, you know, a little momentum and, and get moved past it because he did a lot of things right on one of the rankest bulls in the world. This is little combat from Circle T Ranch and Rodeo. Hopefully this bull will let Stormy Wing work a little bit of that steam off. Stormy Wing usually travels around with Shane Proctor. Shane Proctor due back on tour in a couple weeks. A great first half to that ride for Stormy Wing. Then Little Combat helped him out a little. Yeah, Little Combat started out, you know, he's right up against the chutes here and uh, takes him a jump or two to really get going. And then he starts getting really good. Stormy is making a good ride, jumps out of the spin instead of changing it up. He had a good chance right there to get Stormy on the ground. He sees all this real estate out there and just takes completely off. He's been given a re-ride option and we're now being told he has taken it. So Stormy Wing will get another bull, and that's that old cowboy mentality, Mac, especially in a format like this. If you want to win an event, you got to have a good, solid first ride. Yeah, you, you know, when you've already looking at scores like 88, 87 and a half, you know, you come in there with a 75, you're putting yourself at a big time disadvantage when you go into that championship round. He's going to have Bad Moon, which will, without question, give him a shot. I believe that's the bull Douglas Duncan had last week on his rewrite opportunity that got him the tie for the round win. Yeah, I don't think Stormy doesn't know that, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's the case with the rewrite bulls. Most of the time, there are always a lot of really good bulls. You are definitely going to have a chance to better yourself. Caleb Sanderson. Trying to figure something out this season. He had such a great end to 2011. Started off 2012 in New York with the top 10 performance. But now Mac has sort of settled into the pattern that I saw develop last year where he really didn't often ride more than one bull a weekend. And last week was another example of that going one for two. At least he made the Built For Tough championship round. But he's got to put that string together. Yeah, it's so bizarre to see after the world finals that we've seen him have last season. You know, you think, all right, here's a great springboard for this guy. But he's kind of fallen back into his old ways a little bit of last season. That bull's name, V5, it looks like he brought more of a V12 against Caleb Sanderson. Sanderson, no match for that power. Yeah, and you can see it right here. The bull gives him one little fake, and then look at C Caleb's head right there. He's looking straight at the ground. He's got no chance to go left with the bull. V5, unridden in his Built for Tough series career, showing why now 0 for 8. No rider has been able to match wits against that bull. Caleb Sanderson, the latest to fall victim. Douglas Duncan has done a lot in his young career. He's about to scratch off one of his goals, which in ride in front of his family and friends as a member of the world's premier bull riding organization. In today's Golden Corral, great out of the gate, we feature one of the local hometown favorites, Mac, Douglas Duncan. He busted out the family album for us, and as you well know, 
this is a typical start for a lot of bull riders. You catch the bug at a young age, and then the belt buckles and the accolades follow. Yeah, and this is, this is a guy that whose family has supported him a million percent throughout his, his young career so far. And, and this is all Douglas Duncan's ever wanted to get to do is be a professional bull rider. Look at that photo, Stormy Wing in the background, <laughs> watching Douglas Duncan perform well. That's your Golden Corral, great out of the gate. Duncan will now, after performing eighth in Atlanta, try to impress his family and friends. And the man pulling his rope for him, his father, Mike, Leah had a chance to speak with both of them before the start of this event. And before they go, here's Leah again. It, it bears repeating that Mike is so proud of his son, Douglas, because he's a, a good man and, and he craves the sport. But one of the things, you talked about Chris Shivers' eyes twinkling earlier. Douglas Duncan's were the same with this bull heebie-jeebie. This is the bull that Luke had in Oklahoma City, and he was 89 and, uh, and some change on. So Douglas knows what he's got underneath him. He knows this is a bull that can get him the win that he's been craving since he's been on tour here for the last four years. Leah brings up a great point, Mac. This is one of those barometer bulls, isn't he? It's not an easy bull to ride, but if you want to consider yourself one of the best in the business, you better ride a bull like this. Yeah, this is the kind you, you do crave getting on right here, Craig. He's up and down, turns back. He's everything you look for in a bull as far as from a rider standpoint, because he gives you every opportunity to showcase all the skills that you've got throughout the course of the eight seconds. Heebie has only been ridden 13 out of 33 times on the Billboard Tough Series, but most of them high 80 scores. Right down, Doug. Let's go. Duncan has done it. His father, Mike, celebrates, and so will this crowd here in Reliance Stadium. Mac, you and I both looked at each other when he was introduced earlier. This place erupted, and now they have a second chance to do that. Yeah, it's got to be a great feeling for Douglas, you know, getting to hear all of his hometown fans cheer him on. You know, and, and I tell you, he makes a great ride here, Craig, into his hand. You can see he never quits going at this pool, because he GB is going to try it. He's up and down keep spinning the whole time and the bull gets stronger as the ride goes on and as a rider you've got to match that and that's exactly what Douglas did. Replay judge taking a look for a slap before the final score comes in. That's his father Mike cheering his son on. Supportive as always. Douglas still anxiously awaiting whether or not he's going to get that fourth and final judge to post a total. What's this feel like, Mac, when you're waiting and, you, and, you, and you're not sure yourself? Feels great now because that other score just came up. Just man. came through 90 and a quarter. Let's send it down to Leah. No slap. No slap. <laughs> we're on. Hey, talk to me a little bit about that fancy footwork that you were doing because it looked like you were riding him really loose. Explain your style. Sometimes, I don't know, it looks all different. I've had trouble with my feet ever since I switched these PBR rails, but I mean, it's a rule of the PBR, so you got to go with it. So uh, kind of had to learn how to reuse my feet again, and I don't know, I think I always ride better when they're bicycling anyways. I've never really been, you know, a single hold. I rode all kinds of horses and stuff growing up, thanks to my mom and dad, and man, we got all my supporters here. It's uh, Alvin, Texas. You came out pretty aggressive. Yeah. I wish I could ride like that all the time. I don't know why I get so inconsistent and I don't fight in my head. I know I'm confident and just it's the best bulls in the world. So sometimes it just don't work out. But I give it my all every time and I'm just thankful that I'm going to be able to live my dream ever since I said a little kid. You're going to get another chance here pretty soon in the championship round. Mike. Sam Houston would be proud. Douglas Duncan vaults to the top of the leaderboard, 90 and a quarter points. That is his best score of the season, and Reliance Stadium just found out what we already knew. Yeah, they just got to find out. You can hear the, the cheers erupting in here, uh, you know, and, and great for Douglas. He is, he is a guy that, that's been inconsistent, but he's starting to get that together. Austin Meyer now trying to get himself on the board. This is a goal that he knows all too well. Motown Magic has given him fits in the past, but Austin told me earlier he thinks he's got it figured out. Look out, look out. 
Motown Magic once again outwits one of the top bull riders in the world. This last 4.4. Yeah, and this, this is an old school bull here, kind of an old Bramer type of build on him. And these bulls, the Bramer, it always seems like they want you to the inside of a spin. There's more front end to them than there is back end. And uh, that's exactly what happens to Austin. Gets him rare and back. He's trying to get back to the front end, but now he's already too far on the inside of the spin. Now our world number two, three, and Austin Meyer number four will not make the Built for Tough championship round, which means J.B. Mooney, if he can convert on his next ride, is going to drastically pad his lead in the standings. Yeah. Austin conversing with his dad right there, trying to figure out how he can beat Motown Magic the next time around. And now it's Luke Snyder's turn, who's had a promising start to his season already. Three top tens a couple weeks ago. We talked about that new Bass Pro Shops helmet, that, he, the, that invincible helmet that he's wearing. Snyder, meanwhile, wants his riding to do the talking. This is Bubba's Got Rack. The first time we've seen this bull on the Built Ford Tough Series. Yeah, he, he does have a rack. The horns are what he's talking about there, Craig. And uh, he's got some big ones there. And uh, Luke would be glad he's got that old Bass Pro Shop helmet on there. <laughs> Keep him a little safer. He told me these horns are as long as his arms fully extended. Does that, I know you're not supposed to let anything change your approach or your style, but is it hard not to think about that when you're sitting on the back of this bull? Well, yeah, you're not supposed to, but when they're waving those big old horns around in front of your face, you know, it's, it's you're a only human. Exactly. <laughs> Some teamwork from our bullfighters right there. <laughs> Bubba's got rack, Bubba's got game, and Bubba's got some extra energy. Yeah, and, and you know, it, it, as we are talking about, the, the horns can be a little intimidating, but the best place to be, you got to crawl right up in between them, and that's where you got to stay for the ride, because as soon as they get your body lean back, especially a bull going away from your hand, man, it makes it tough. Frank Newsom is having a... Good day at the office, and I, by good, I mean active, because he wouldn't have it any other way. Helps Luke Snyder stay clear on that one. Unfortunately for Luke, no ride means no Built Ford Tough Championship round. Here's Cord McCoy going up against Panther, and as always, when I saw him earlier, smiling. Smiling in a great <laughs> mood and ready to go, wasn't he? Why not smile? Ninth last week in Atlanta. Panthers a bull you can get a very good score on. Stormy Wing has the top score on this bull from Billings last year, 88 points. Yeah, a bull that can provide a big score here, and the way cord has been riding, this is a guy that can capitalize on it. Walk us through that, Mac. I don't know if he just left the shoots in a poor no, position, but he there. was looking immediately off to the side. I, get yeah, I, I don't know, I can't wait to see this back, Craig, because this has just not been Cord McCoy so far this year. See, right here leaves out, he's square with him right there. Horn hits him in the helmet. You know, he's, Cord's kind of got a, a pattern of getting pretty hunched over, you know, but he wants to stay out over front of these bulls. And you could see it right there, that horn hit his helmet. That was 2010 Cord McCoy, where he only rode about 14% of his bulls. This year, he has been riding much, much better. But he is done for this weekend in Houston. Our bad boy mower lead dog, Douglas Duncan. And much like Shivers last week, Duncan hoping to write the perfect script in his hometown of Houston. He may end up going up against one of the baddest in the business in the form of perfect poison. It would be Justin Kuhn facing Asteroid and Chris Shivers against Rock and Roll. J.B. Mooney with the fourth best ride is now matched up against Shepherd Hills Tested. And that ironically could be a bull he would face next week at Iron Cowboy as well. Still to come, Brazilian Fabiano Vieira. Shades of Renato Nunes there going all the way back on his pocket. But somehow Vieira is able to ride Asteroid. When the PBR continues on NBC Sports Network.
I grew up in Alvin, Texas, so it's a, kind of a suburb of Houston, and uh, I grew up going to Astrodome and, and watching, watching the rodeo and, and one day you know, telling myself that, that I was going to be here. The two partnerships go hand in hand. Uh, it's a great way to kick off Rodeo Houston. We've got great barbecue right next door, you know, the world's largest. So we've really been enjoying it for that fact, and uh, they just kind of welcomed us with open arms, and we hope to blow the roof off this place and, and uh, make it a partnership that lasts for years. Another special moment here for the fans in Houston. That is the one and only Bum Phillips, without question, the most famous football coach in the history of this area, Mac. And he got a chance to talk to the guys early on. And one thing that I noted when I was in the locker room with them was he said, look, I may be a football coach, but I started off as a cowboy working on ranches. And, and he has not missed a telecast. This is the more amazing thing. He has not missed a Built Ford Tough Series telecast in a dozen years. That is amazing. And I know it was a, a huge honor for you to get to meet him and, and get to spend a few minutes talking with him. Well, I was honest with him. I told him I grew up a Cleveland Browns fan, and he used to give me fits as a young kid. And he just laughed and said, oh, yeah. Against Cleveland, those were some good games. So now Fabiano Vieira goes up against Keeping It Real, which should be a very good ride. Vieira, one of the more sticky riders on tour. But this weekend, not meant to be. And you're shaking your head, Mac, because I think a lot of people felt that that was a slam dunk. Yeah, you know, he started him so good, and, and you could see in there, you know, the bull's about to jump out of the spin, and he's going to go back the other direction. And, and he just didn't make that move to get back over the front end. you got to be just as aggressive when these bulls change it up. See, the bull gets him back, and he stays right there and then just gives up the ship. Uh, you can't do that against these great bulls. I spoke with Fabiano last week, which was his first event back, and perhaps he's a little rusty. He said no problem at all. He'd been riding bulls back in Brazil, but Vieira not his normal self so far, at least up here in the U.S. this season. Still only eight qualified rides. It's Douglas Duncan from Alvin, Texas, which is only 30 miles south of here, trying to impress his hometown fans, making our way down to Margo Agushi, the Brazilian with 79 points on the board. This is Dakota Beck trying to add his name to the have-ridden list, going up against Backdraft. Good matchup here. Dakota's a, one of these another young, talented guys. He reaches over, the clock's gonna stop at 2.51 on the touch. And, and you know, Craig, it is so, it's so hard, but so important for these young guys. They come in here, they're so fired up, you know, they wanna show their stuff, show what they can do, and you just cannot get overly aggressive <laughs> on these bulls. It, it, it's such a fine line you gotta walk, you know, and, and uh, you just can't override them. On that one, Dakota Breck, Beck, excuse me, the Washington Cowboy who has had a couple very good results this season, seventh in Baltimore, as well as a 16th in Oklahoma City. Just right there, still trying to find his way a little bit in 2012. This is Reese Cates, who's come back from that injury he sustained at the Touring Pro event in Denver. Last week he was back in Atlanta. We haven't seen him since New York. He's going to touch it as well at 2.90. And Mac, is that just something, going back to what a few guys have said about the caliber and the power of these bulls, that Reese just get, needs to get his feet wet a little bit and get reused to that? Well, I, you know, maybe that is the case here because this bull, you know, the, the Reese Cates of old chews this bull up every day, you know. Bull gets into the spin. Reese got a pretty good seat, but he's got no weight on his feet. Both of them come up behind him, and you can't ride any of them when, when you can't keep your feet on each side. Second time in two weeks, we've seen Reese Cates go one and done. He'll find out like the rest of us as a spectator who's gonna become our winner here in Houston. Eight qualified rides, which means Jack Daniels, Tennessee Honey would be matched up against Marco Agushi. That would start our Built For Tough Championship round. We would work our way all the way down to Douglas Duncan. Well, Asteroid is expected to make an impact every time he leaves the shoots, and he usually delivers on that promise.
taking a look at our flashback for the night, 2001, Houston. This guy looks familiar. <laughs> remember this ride? <laughs> looks younger. <laughs> That's for darn sure. <laughs> yeah, I remember it because I was so scared of that bull. That's a bull named Law Dog, and he was really mean. One of the many wins in your career, partner. The last time we were in Houston was when you won that, the fourth year here since then. It's been a long time coming, but we are back, and it's a hometown favorite, Douglas Duncan, winning at the moment. Everybody wants to slap you, slap you high fives, don't they, when you win the event? <laughs> yeah, when you stay on, everybody <laughs> likes to likes to give fives and hang out. They like you in the arena, and they like you at the bar afterwards. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Douglas Duncan, one of eight to get the qualified rides. He's got a whopping 90 and a quarter points. That came compliments of Heebie Jeebie. Now it's Stormy Wings re-ride, and he's got a chance to best Douglas Duncan because Bad Moon can give you a lot of points. Yeah, this is a great bull. I don't, I don't know if, if, if he can outscore him. It's going to be really close, though. If he can get the whistle, you know, he's going to be anywhere from uh, 87 and three quarters to 89. I don't, I don't think he's going to crack that 90 point mark on him. Bull's going to have to have a really good day, but he can definitely put himself in great position coming back. This was the re-ride bull that Douglas Duncan had in the long round last week. That got him to the Built Ford Tough Championship round as well as tied him for that round win with J.B. Mooney. Five round wins last season for Stormy Wing. He knows how to seal the deal when he's given a good bull underneath him. Stormy Wing converts on his second opportunity. You go back to the bull riding bases, Smack. You talk about how your upper body and your lower body have to be able to work separately. And on that ride, he did just that. Yeah, he did a good job. And well, Bad Moon had a good day, too. You know, he, he stayed hooked up the whole time, stayed pretty strong. And uh, Stormy kept, kept gritting it out there. You can see at the end, he's in really good control, opening up with his outside leg, showing the judges. I got this under control, fellas. He makes that rewrite pay off. He's standing by with Leah. 6-11 last weekend on Asteroid, and you just missed him by one spot this time. You're actually sitting third right now. You'll have a bull called Rock and Roll. Looking forward to the next round. Always looking forward to getting on another one. Uh, yeah, that last week, that's Dinosaur Bones. I'll catch him somewhere else this year, and I'm going to get him back. All right, good luck next run. <laughs> I like that saying, Dinosaur Bones. It's in the past. Not even going to think about it. Looking forward to his next opportunity, which will come. This is Dusty Ephraim against T-Rex. T-Rex the bull that Justin Kuhn had that 90-point score on last week. And here, unfortunately, he makes mincemeat of the Canadian. Yeah, really good bull. And you're going to see his inside foot come up, uh, not being any kind of contact with this bull. And when that happens, boom, right over his uh, left shoulder, the bully goes. I spoke with Dusty in the locker room earlier. He usually drives to every event back and forth, Mac, from Canada. This week, however, he stayed down in the south. He said he probably spent as much living here as he does on gas going back and forth, but he liked not sitting in the driver's seat for as long. Yeah, man, that's sure been a long drive from Atlanta to Canada, Houston. And you don't often see Ephraim show that much emotion. You can tell he knows he missed an opportunity there. This is Renato Nunes going up against Dark Shadow, another one from Wolf Creek Cattle Company. And if you're one of the contractors, you're worried, aren't you, when you see Valeron and Renato on your bulls this week? You drew tough, you know. <laughs> that, that really goes without saying when you got both of those guys on your bulls. But uh, so this far, the, their bulls have held up to it pretty this well, you know, with getting Valderon off, getting him on the ground once. Uh, I don't think they're going to get both of them on the ground today, though. I think Renato rides this bull, should be into his hand, and uh, he's tough to get on the ground when they go that direction. Shorty, how do you rate Renato's chances here? 
Well, you know, yep. good. Anytime Ronaldo's getting on something, I'm not going to bet against him. This guy, he's a champion. Uh, he is for a reason. And hey. Justin, yes, this will, bull will go left, but he'll also come to the right. Uh, I guess that's what he's been doing here as of lately, they tell me. So away from his hand, that's not going to affect him, though. This guy, this guy, you know, he, he's a bull rider, and uh, I think he rides this bull right here and gets into the championship round. We've talked over the past few so months, Mac, so about how Renato came back at the end of last year to gain some confidence coming into 2012. It's safe to say I think he's done that. He's already had four top tens this year. He just hasn't had a breakthrough weekend. Yeah, I think his confidence is definitely back though, Craig, and it's just a matter of time before he does have that breakthrough weekend. Renato is our 10th qualified ride. And after a couple weeks of feeling he was getting too far back on the bulls and letting that free arm dictate well how he went too far backwards, it seems as though he's corrected it a bit. Yeah, and that's, that's the only thing that I've ever felt like Renato has to kind of be conscious and pay attention of is getting too far back because, man, when this little guy keeps his chin down and can keep the bull in focus, he's as strong as any guy on tour for his body size, and he sure makes it look exciting. 87 points, good enough to put him in fifth, and he's with Leah. And the 10th qualified ride today, how important was it for you to make it to this next round? You know, never is important than that for me. Everything is, I gotta hang out, then I feel nervous because I'm the last one. And I don't know much about that bull, but I know him and got a big horn, that's why I got to stay behind a little bit. But I feel good, I feel great for other than others. Never a problem when they spin a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> the truth comes out. <laughs> well, it's quite interesting that it worked out to be a normal built for a tough championship round. We usually take 10, and that's exactly what the riders have given us this weekend here in Houston. It'll be a Gouche starting it all off with Trickster. We just saw Renato Nunez ride, and he will be paired up against Shepherd Hills Trapper. And look at that, Mac. Justin Kuhn is going to have Asteroid. Douglas Duncan, meanwhile, the number one seed will go up against Perfect Poison, only ridden four out of 25 times in his career. It was Fabiano Vieira who rode him at the World Finals last season for 91 and three quarters points. Major League Soccer arrives on the NBC Sports Network with the New York Red Bulls taking on FC Dallas. All rise for the new season of MLS, Sunday, March 11th, on the all-new NBC Sports Network. Now it's time for the Built Ford Tough Invasion. Here in Houston, it's all about the barbecue. And the Cowboys had a chance to work with some of the best. On this week's Built Ford Tough Invasion, the folks over at Ford asked us to lend them a hand. Next week is the Houston Livestock Show, and Ford's played a big role in that. Well, I guess there's like a display setup too that Ford has. It's like 27,000 feet of a, of a display. So let's uh, let's go check that big thing out. And the world's largest barbecue contest going on. So we gotta check that out too, Ross, man. Well, I can always eat, so. I know that's I'm, true. How you doing, sir? Ian Roberson? Hey, Ross Coleman, good to meet you, sir. Luke Schneider. Nice to meet you, Luke. How you doing? So what we got going on around here? Well, um, you're at the uh, 2012 Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, and this is the Ford exhibit, and uh, we're expecting about two million people to come through the, the show this year. We're ready to go to work. If you thank you very much, we're ready yeah, for you. Okay, Luke, get after her, son. There you go. Sure. That's how you get her done, right there. That's yes, it. Sir. Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, this hard work, man, it's making me hungry, Luke. <laughs> There's a barbecue contest going on right down the street. Big old farm boy. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all this great barbecue around here, what well, you say we meet last year's world champion? Be the judge of that ourselves. Let's eat, man. Here you go, guys. Oh, we appreciate this. Thank you, sir. Got some barbecue. Y'all said something about spicy, didn't you? Yes, Absolutely. Sir. Let me get you something to spice that up just a little bit. Man, this is pretty hospitable right here. You know we're in Texas now. <laughs> this rib candy has got some habanero peppers on it, and you can use it like barbecue sauce. Just drizzle a little bit over something. Don't be a stally. <laughs> yeah. Come on now, Luke. 
Come on now, oh, Luke. Come, come on, on now. now. Fans, don't miss out on the chance of a lifetime. You can win a 2012 F-150 SVT Raptor, that VIP trip for two to the 2012 PBR World Finals in Las Vegas, and the grand prize winner will take home a new truck. Go to FordInvasion.com. Well, the NBA All-Star Game may be going on in Orlando this weekend, but we've got some all-stars of our own that can slam, dunk, and deliver. And in this sport, you don't get called for a foul, because of body contact. Here in Houston, the riders have done all the tough work, but we have worked our way to the cream of the crop. Ten men in the Built Ford Tough Championship round, and these are the ten bulls that they will face. And once again, we welcome you to our PBR Built Ford Tough field box this weekend alongside two-time PBR world champ Justin McBride. I'm Craig Upper Mack. In this field, we've got a two-time PBR world champ, our current world number one, and the hometown favorite. Who are you going to go with? Well, I, I'm going to reach in there and go with Renato Nunez on this one, Craig. Shepherd Hills Trapper. I think the guys that are coming into this round in front of him have drawn a little too tough. I think this bull is going to be one of the few that they ride in the championship round. I think it's enough points for Renato to vault to the lead. Shorty, there are going to be more than enough points, we think, in this round on offer. Which pairing do you like? Well, I like J.B. Mooney on Will James. This is the bull. He will go either way. Uh, either way, he's still got a lot of up and down. He's a strong bull, but that doesn't affect J.B. Mooney. This is a guy that's riding with confidence. He has all abilities in the world. We all know that and have seen it a lot. I like the matchup. I think he's going to win the round. Leah, with Justin Kuhn, what do you got for us? Well, Justin's not one to back down from a challenge. Was it a blessing or a curse to get second in this round? Uh, uh, absolutely a blessing for sure. I've been looking forward to getting on this bull, and I'm not going to back up. And I think I can ride him, and we'll sure see here in just a little bit. You've seen him buck enough times. What will it take? Uh, I guess just keeping my hands shut. I mean, he does a little everything, and, uh, you know, he, he'll go right, go left, or uh, I guess keeping my hands shut and my chin tucked and, uh, you know, make the whistle. Every one of these Cowboys says that riding Asteroid is 100% total commitment. Not only total commitment, but a chance of a lifetime. Everyone would love to be the first one to get it done on that bull. Marco Agushi, he's going to start us off against Trickster. This is a bull that, at least as the statistics go, Mac, one of the better ones in this round, ridden two for two times this season last time, was in fact Marco Agushi in Atlanta last week for 88 and a half points. Yeah, got a bull he knows, uh, you know, already had some success on him once before. You just got to remember everything that went right the last time and repeat it, you know? <laughs> the other ride on this bull this year, Cody Nance, when he won at New York, rode this bull for 90 and a quarter. Leah has more. Talked with uh, Marco before this round, and he said that he's been working on memorizing what these bulls do, but obviously he hasn't been around him enough to really study, so he's not afraid to ask not just the Brazilian riders, but everybody what they're going to do. And I asked him if he has a preference, and without hesitation or shame, he said, I like him to go into my hand. There's a lot to like about this young man, isn't there, Mac? I mean, you visit with him in the locker room. He's really making an effort with his English. He tries to converse whenever we uh, have questions for him. Clearly, his writing has impressed in the weeks he's been here. Yeah, a really talented young guy, you know. And, and you know, I, I know he told Leah that he likes for bulls that go into his hand, and, and, and that's a great thing. But I've seen he make some pretty good rides on the bulls that go the other direction also. Shorty Marco was very impressive last week in Atlanta, and we just highlighted the fact that this was the bull he saw in the championship round there. Yeah, you know, and he knows the bull. He knows what's going to happen. What I like about this guy, though, is, you know, uh, the mark of, of a true champion. When he gets out of shape, he does not panic. He stays with the, 
uh, with the ride, you know, he's not looking off. He's trying to figure out how to get back to his rope, get to, to square, and, and start over. And that's what it takes to ride these ranked bulls because we all know and heard before that you're going to get out of shape on these ranked bulls and to stay focused and finish the ride. Take a moment to remind everyone just a little bit of Agushi's story. He started riding at the age of 10. He only went pro four years ago, actually grew up in the city. But his best friend, Paulo Lima, who's no longer on Tour Mac, finally said to him, you know, you should ride bulls. <laughs> then he started doing pretty well. Then Paulo said, you know, you should come to the U.S. and ride bulls. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, if you're going to if you're going to be a bull rider, I think you should definitely do it on the biggest stage in the world. And, and, and that's in the U.S. And not that they don't have some great events in Brazil and they're getting better every year. That's what Chris Shivers told me after winning last week is one of the things that makes every win on the Built for Tough Series special is it's not only against the best Cowboys, but it has been against the best Bulls throughout Chris Shiver's career. He's done all of his riding on the Built for Tough Series, which is an amazing fact. I know you were the same. Yeah, you know, and, and it's it's a little bit of something that gets into your blood when you get used to coming and getting on these type of Bulls at these venues and, and against the great guys. You don't want to go do it anywhere else. Gucci still getting settled on the back of Trickster. He took a pop and paid for that commitment, but he'll be rewarded with a second score in as many weeks on this bowl. Yeah, a great job. In short, he spoke about this guy's effort and his really his coolness in, in the storm, you know, and this bull does get him a little bit out of shape uh, toward the end of this ride, but he doesn't give up. He keeps trying to get back to the center. Takes a shot at the end, but there's Jesse and the guys coming in, and bullfighters have been on fire tonight. The Cowboys always hoping for the bullfighters to save them, and they do every single time. That left horn makes contact. Agushi doesn't mind because he's got a second score and becomes the new leader here in Houston. Let's send it down to Leah. Marco, I've got to have the interpreter coming over. How much patience did it take for you in the shoots before you finally nodded? Was that something that you're accustomed to? Que passou no shoot? Que, que paciência tinha que ter você para esperar e eventualmente sair? É um todo difícil. Tive que esperar ele entrar na roda para mim depois acompanhar. Mas é um bom todo, me deu uma boa nota. It's a difficult bull. He doesn't he doesn't settle down in the shoot, but he's a good bull and he gave me a good ride. Excellent, thank you. And we, Craig, showing it up to you for uh, Jory. That's right. We just saw Jory Marcus buck off of Jack Daniels after party. After party, absolutely bringing it, Mac. This bull had only been ridden one of five times this year. Now it's one of six. Yeah, and you see this bull do this to a lot of guys, with the exception of Ryan Dirty to ride him last weekend in Atlanta. This bull wants to pull guys down over his shoulder. He's going 100 mile an hour the whole time. Jory walked by time, our that's guarantee. <laughs> walked by our booth. Only thing that makes you stronger is falling off and going back to it. <laughs> that's it. Marcus not afraid of the camera, that's for sure. Giving a little bit of advice to all the young bull riders out there. Now it's time to check in with our defending PBR world champ. This is Silvano Alves, and he has been matched up against Jack Daniels, Tennessee Honey. Tennessee Honey, a little bit better odds than after party, but this is not an easy bull by any means. No, he's going to be a handful for Silvano here. He's going to be away from his hand, and he's going to continue to move forward throughout the spin. Uh, it's going to want Silvano's upper body to lean back, but if he can stay down, which I'm pretty sure he can, keep his elbow down on his free arm, he's got a great shot here. Silvano looking for a little bit of pace. Back. They met in Charlotte last year where the bull bucked him off. Go! No luck again for Alves. And give Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey credit. He just continued to apply the pressure. Yeah, and, and that's a bull that for Silvano is going to be tough for him to get by. As I was saying earlier, he's going to move forward. He's yeah. going to want him back the whole time. He's really got to stay aggressive at going to the front end on this kind of a bull. You cannot cut him off on the backside and, and cut the corner on him and get by him away from your hand. Let's send it down once again to Leah, who's with Tab Barker and Silvano. What's happening, Silvano? What's happening? Nada aconteceu, gente cai. Boi muito pulador. Segurou de parabéns. 
como diz, eu fiz, fiz um pouquinho de errado, caí do boi, acontece. That's a good buck and bull. I have to congratulate him. I just didn't, I didn't ride him. I'll get on the next one. Good said. And that's the philosophy that Silvano has had, whether he rides or he bucks off, he just moves on to the next bull, and we move on to our next pairing, which is Chase Outlaw against the bull, too sexy, too sexy with some good stats. If you're a rider, ridden two out of three times this season. The last one was Oklahoma City, Ryan Dirty Eater for 90 and three quarters. Yeah, great bull here. They got him out on a different delivery today. They got him out on the left-hand side. He is out on the right with Ryan there in Oklahoma City. Uh, but either way, the bull should fall out of here going to the left this time out of this delivery. That'll be into Chase's hand. He can't get in too big a hurry and, and fall down on the inside of the spin here. Chase Outlaw pays the price after that ride, takes a shot. And inside the chutes, you can see him start to crumble, but Mac, he eked out every last ounce of this one. Yeah, he starts him really good, making a really strong ride. The bull gets him raised up and to the outside, and when you hang on and bear down this hard, it's going to put you in a compromising position when the eight seconds comes. He's definitely going to get a score. 82 and three quarters is going to give him the lead. And there's the contact. The bad news is the fact that he gets smacked after he hits the dirt. The good news is he's scored enough to move into first. 84 points. And Chase Outlaw, even amidst the pain, can salute the crowd. Without question, he's going to finish in the best result of his Built for Tough Series career. It just remains to be seen where it will be in the top 10. And now it's J.B. Mooney's turn, our world number one. He walked by the booth, and Mac looked at you and said, not too crazy about this bull, Will James. Yeah, I said he had seen him in Denver. He's just kind of out of line and all over the place. Uh, wasn't, wasn't real thrilled, you know. I, I know he'd love a matchup against Asteroid, the more famous bulls that are out in this round. Uh, but these right here are the kind, if he can get by them, you know, he can really put a lot more distance between himself and the guys chasing him that weren't able to make this championship And round. that's exactly what is at stake. No chance whatsoever. Mesa Pate has got something in Will James right there. And Will James just defiantly stares at everybody inside Reliance Statement like, that's all you got, JB? <laughs> they go Black Bull, really? Really uphill out of here, a great big jump. Whips JB down over his shoulder. You can see he's got his head picked up. Right he goes, looked like a, looked like a really good bull to me. One big jump and around to the right. Agushi sits in second. He's gonna gain some ground in JB. Everybody else is gonna lose a little. Mooney will end up in eighth overall, sharing some words with Chase Outlaw, and we just mentioned <laughs> Mesa Pate should be smiling. Her Bulls did a great job yet again this weekend. And it is young Chase Outlaw, only 19 years of age. This is his third event of his Built for Tough Series career. You can see he is wincing, dealing with some painful issues, but you don't feel any pain when you're the bad boy mower lead dog. Riders still to come, including Asteroid and Perfect Poison. Best Cowboys earned their way here. And now it comes down to this. How much does Meyer have left? He's definitely beat up, worn out, and tired. Colby Yates is 2.35 seconds away. Go. Is it time to beat Destiny just outside Dallas? And he's done it. Colby Yates is the 2011 PBR Iron Cowboy. If he rides, he's the last one.
Without question, two of the more exciting events last season. We're hoping for more of the same. Next week, we are in Cowboy Stadium. We are live starting at 8 Eastern. We'll also have that Dirks Bentley concert. And then the following week, Ford Field in Detroit Mac, Big and Rich concert. And these both these formats we're going to see in the coming weeks are going to be exciting. And we're going to next week see the return of Bushwhacker. Yeah, we're going to be really excited to see how he comes back from that. There's your bad boy mower lead dog, Chase Outlaw. He has never been in that position. And now he has nervous moments where all he can do is watch and wait. We have five rides to go here in Houston before we crown a champion. And it is a murderer's row of men who have yet to ride, starting with 2010 PBR world champ Renato Nunes, and he will face Shepherd Hills Trapper. Yeah, I think this is a great matchup right here. This bull has got a really wicked corner to him, but if guys can get by that, looks like he rides pretty good after that. The bull, he's gonna keep trying, but he gets a lot smoother. Uh, and going back to Chase, he does have a, it's a pretty tough list to set and wait for. You got Renato, and then Chris Shivers, uh, then a couple of the young gunslingers left to go, I uh, mean, that have already posted some really good rides tonight. You and, your, and, and the other men, you know, that we know that are here on television talking about this sport, you know that this is unique in the sense that you face the bull. That's who you have to really concentrate on as your competition. So. Are you nervous as you wait? Because you want to see your fellow riders do well, but you have to think Chase Outlaw wants to win this one. Uh, you know he definitely wants to win this thing, but I tell you what, he's got a pretty good feeling right now because he rode both of his bulls, mm -hmm. you know, and that's a that's a real feeling of satisfaction and accomplishment that he has right now. And it's just icing on the cake with the cherry on top if he can get the win. Another look at Chase. Well, we've got a moment. Leah has more. I just spoke with Dr. Tanny Freeman, and he said that Chase Outlaw got the wind knocked out of him, um, and we've seen this before, and that he is going to be, a, a, he'll be all right by next weekend. Tanny said, he'll be fine. Very good to know. Chase Outlaw, meanwhile, gets to watch hey, Renato. Goes up, go up against Shepherd Hills Trapper. We saw Cody Loster on this bull last week in Atlanta. It only took 2.53 seconds for Shepherd Hills Trapper to win that duel. He's been ridden twice this year. Last time was by Austin Meyer in the 15-15 bucking battle in Sacramento for a whopping 92 and a quarter points. So we know the points are underneath Renato. Yeah, the points are there. This bull's probably going to start out to the right away from Renato's hand, and then he will change it up. And if Renato makes it to that change up, it's all in his favor because then he's going back to the left. He does not make it to the change of direction. The bull stays right, at least long enough to dispense with the former PBR world champ. And Renato is going to end the weekend in seventh. Yeah, and the bull, as always with this bull, has a great day. Maybe a little better day than usual right here, right in the gate. Doesn't have the, the wicked corner I was talking about where he kind of stumbles a little bit. This time, he just brings everything he's got. He's getting in the air and following it up with a lot of kick. Still waiting on one final bull score, 44 and a quarter. Very respectable for Shepherd Hills Trapper. One of the reasons why you can score over 90 points if you make it to the eight second mark on this bull. We'll see Renato again next weekend. Chris Shivers, here we go. Last weekend's winner in Atlanta, which was his 22nd career win along the way. He had his 93rd 90 plus point ride. And there's a chance for something big here as well. Shepherd Hills tested, unridden in his career, and Shivers would love to put the notch on his belt. Yeah, you know, with that being said, this bull's unridden in his career, and I know this is Chris's last year, you know, and he's, he's a little bit older now, but he used to ride these kind of bulls all the time. I mean, this is, this is what he did, and he, that's why he has 93, 90 plus point rides, is because he could ride the bulls that hadn't been ridden. He tied for the win last week in the championship round. He rode Delco for 90 points. That was that 93rd 90-point 90 ride that we mentioned. 
Shorty, what do you think Shivers' chances are here? Well, I'm never going to bet against Chris Shivers. The one thing I know about Chris Shivers, this may be his last year, but anytime he puts his hand in that rope, he's going to be given 110%. He's going to do that again here today. And uh, bulls that have never been ridden, that's been Chris Shivers' business for a long time. And I hope you ride this bull. I want to see another big score. This bull bucked off Austin Meyer in Oklahoma City right around five Go. seconds. Five point three eight for Shivers. He had such a good correction, Mac. It looks like it looked like he was going to get centered again, but he paid the price for that overcorrection. Yeah, and just when he would maybe look like he was going to get centered, this bull just brings it harder and harder every jump. I mean, it, I'm willing to throw this bull in the mix with World Championship caliber right now. They, they can't buck a lot harder than this one just did, Craig. Chris has given it everything he's got. I mean, look at that bull. 46 points. You were impressed. So were the judges. Shepard Hills tested, keeps his undefeated record intact. Now 0 for 15 throughout his career and 0 for 5 on the Built for Tough series. You know Chris Shivers is duly impressed as well. Now it's Stormy Wings' turn. He's matched up against Rock and Roll. This bull bucked off Renato Nunez back in Oklahoma City in the championship round. And this bull also unridden in his career. Yeah, unridden in his career so far, Craig. And another bull that I think is, is quietly putting himself in the mix as a world championship type of contender. He's got a bull, he's, he really likes to get guys loosened up before he ever gets into the spin. And that definitely plays in the bull's favor. He's wired, so let's listen in. Good afternoon, let have fun. This bull has bucked off Silvano Alves. That was earlier this year in Anaheim. Alves only lasted about three seconds. Bucked off also Marchi, Palermo. <laughs> and Stormy Wing unable to figure him out. Wing gets another top five result. He was fourth in Baltimore and now a fifth here in Houston. Another solid weekend that's going to keep him on tour for a while. Yeah, and, and this bull, Craig, going back to him just for a second here. You know, in, in Oklahoma City, he bucked off for Nato, and he did the exact opposite thing. He went a few jumps and went to the left. Here we see him change it up to the right. Tells me it's a bull that really bucks off of Phil. Whatever these guys are doing, he's going to change it up and do something else to try and answer it. Now that Stormy Wing exits, we've got two rides left here in Reliance Stadium. Chase Outlaw, who rode too sexy off the side for 84 points. It was good enough to give him the lead. But we're going to find out if the last man out of the chutes, Douglas Duncan, he's already fulfilled his dream of riding in front of his hometown fans. Can he cap it off with the exclamation point and bank the win? NBC Sports Network's coverage of the PBR Build Ford Tough Series is brought to you by Las Vegas, where what happens here stays here. By Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. And by Blue Tax, the nation's full service tax solution firm. Welcome back to Houston, Arkansas Cowboy Chase Outlaw unquestionably will have the best result of his young Built for Tough Series career after this weekend. Whether or not it's his first win remains to be seen. The last man out of the shoots will be Douglas Duncan there on the right hand side of your screen in the black. He grew up in Alvin, Texas. His family brought him to Rodeo Houston throughout his young younger years. He's always dreamed of not only riding here but winning here and today he will have his chance. But first, we get to watch the pairing between Justin Kuhn and Asteroid. And Asteroid trying to pad his stats, nine straight buck offs for this bull, and two times this year, the top bull of the weekend. Yeah, he's, he's uh, definitely made it known that he's one of the best bulls in the world, Craig, and really turned into a very exciting bull to watch. And 
you know, part with with part of that excitement that comes along with this bull is a little bit of fear factor for the owners and the hauler, the guy that takes care of this bull. Uh, Gene Melton was telling me the other day, you know, he goes, I just cringe every time this bull goes out. I'm just so scared. Uh, he said, unlike Bushwhacker, Asteroid doesn't know how to take care of himself yet. He's still really wild. He got that hair trigger and stays fired up the whole time. Full throttle 100% of the time. There's no acceleration in this bull. He is flat out from the get-go. Justin Kuhn comes in with his own momentum after going through two for two last week, finishing fifth overall in Atlanta and getting his first 90-plus point ride of his career. Asteroid finished runner-up to Bushwhacker in terms of the world champion bucking bull race in 2011. This year, the gang at Circle T Ranch and Rodeo hopes, hoping that he can bring home that top spot in terms of the Bulls. <laughs> Last week, it was 6.11. This week, the Cowboys inch a little closer. Justin Kuhn, 6.74 seconds. And the bull did something totally different each time. Last week, takes a couple big jumps, goes left. This week, he looks left, goes back right. That played into Justin Kuhn's favor for a little bit. He was trying to be the first one to get him stuck. Asteroid finally just is too much for him to handle, though. And he does a great job, though, of keeping his folks. You can see this bull's rearing his head back. He's trying to keep it down. That's what makes this bull such a great one, though, because he never weakens. He never lets up. And I think you started to say as well for Kuhn, he never weakened either. His concentration was clearly on the back of that bull throughout the 6.74 seconds that ride lasted. And we come down to one final man, Douglas Duncan. It is not going to be easy for him to take the first win of the season. Duncan finished second last year in Hartford. He's still looking for his first ever Built for Tough Series win. And what a win it would be if he could break perfect poison stranglehold. This bull was ridden at the finals by Fabiano Vieira, but not many other men have been able to say that. Yeah, it doesn't get any tougher than this bull right here. You never know what he's going to do, what the next jump holds. He'll back up, move forward, spin either way, belly rolls. He's got the whole package. Of the four times this bull has been ridden, all of them over 87 and three quarters points. Basically, if Duncan rides, he will win. He's eight seconds away from igniting this Reliant Stadium crowd. It was not meant to be for Douglas Duncan. It was meant to be for Chase Outlaw. Coming into this weekend, his best result ever, 23rd in Oklahoma City. And now Chase Outlaw finds himself a winner of an event on the Built Ford Tough Series. Meanwhile, though, for Douglas Duncan, he gave it everything he had. Yeah, it gives her, gives her a pretty good go here. You can see this bull gets turned back to the right, wants him down inside, now gets him rocked back outside, pops the rope out of his hand. It's all over with from there. You ain't gonna ride that one with no hands. As Douglas Duncan walks off, still accepting the cheers from this crowd here. Chase Outlaw is the, officially our winner here in Houston. He becomes the super eight seconds ride of the night. It was his ride in the championship round. Yeah, gets a little too sexy here. He lays it all out on the line. Gets him raised up, bad shape, but he is not letting go of that one. Chase Outlaw. Only two, one of two men that goes two for two. And his 84 in the championship round was enough. The big winner this weekend, even though he didn't get the official number one spot, is Marco Agushi. He was number five in the world coming in. Everyone in front of him either bucked off in the long round or in J.B. Mooney's case, bucked off in the championship round. So he will garner a number of bonus points and move his way up the charts in the overall world standings. Let's send it down to Leah with this weekend's winner. Houston, you have just seen a novel first time experience. Chase Outlaw wins his first Build Fort Tough Series event. Congratulations. I don't believe that this will be your last, will it? No, ma'am. Uh, hopefully get a lot more of these this year. 
Tell me a little bit about the nerves and the sensation of riding in the championship round in a stadium event. Uh, it was sort of nervous, but not any different than my first one. And I knew I had to make it count. I was finally here, so I had to get it done. You also took a pretty big hit with Too Sexy Got Stepped On. How you doing? Uh, doing a lot better. It's too far from my heart to really hurt me. This is one tough cowboy. You have one week between now and the next stadium event. What will be your goals and your training plan for the week? I uh, go to San Antonio next week and win that bull ride next Friday and go to Dallas. Looking forward all the time. Congratulations to Chase Outlaw, tonight's winner. Chase Outlaw makes it sound oh so simple. Meanwhile, J.B. Mooney able to increase his lead on Valderon, but Marco Agushimak moves up from fifth to third. Yeah, and, and moved, did a, a lot of that tonight, Craig. You know, with coming in in the last position, that's what it goes a long ways to getting your bulls road and it helping you climb the ladder. We're at the second stop of four during our stadium tour. Time to wrap everything up. Let's continue, Mac, to talk about the riders. JB, he doesn't ride in the championship round, but we do need to highlight the fact that he continues to distance himself from his closest rivals. Yeah, he did. Made a good, solid route, uh, ride in the long round tonight. The other guys behind him weren't able to do that, so he gets some more points. And in terms of the Bulls, Shorty, Asteroid impresses yet again, but how about those Shepherd Hills Bulls? Yeah, you know, both the Shepherd Hill Bulls, all the Shepherd Hills Bulls really performed good tonight. Uh, we had some unridden Bulls stay unridden. Uh, overall, just a great, a great set of Bulls. And uh, Asteroid, I thought he made a mistake going to the right. Mm -hmm. Justin had a pretty good chance at him but doesn't weaken, shows his greatness once again. That's right, Justin Kuhn also shows his greatness being in the top five yet again this weekend. Well, thanks for joining us here at Reliance Stadium, which is again the second stop of our stadium tour. Don't miss the next all new episode of Costas tonight, Thursday at 8 Eastern. Next week, we are gonna be at Cowboy Stadium in Arlington, Texas for Iron Cowboy 3. And for Justin McBride, Shorty Gorham, Leah Garcia, and our entire crew, I'm Craig Hummer. This has been a presentation of the PBR in association with NBC Sports Network. is bull riding. This is the PBR.